in this handidograph, we see that there is erosion classically involving the radial end of the middle phalanx. So, if you can see this image on the radial end of the middle phalanx, on the radial end of the middle phalanx, so this is the thumb, so this is the radius and this is the ulnar aspect of the digits. So, involving the radial end of the middle phalanx, so this is the radial end, this is the ulnar end. So, you can see those erosions classically involving the radial end of the middle phalanx. So, when you see these erosions involving the radial end of the middle phalanx, and you can also see there is erosion and tufting and erosions of the distal phalanx. So, when you see these erosions of the distal phalanx also, all of this will go in favor of what? Hyperparathyroidism. Hyperparathyroidism has this classic erosions on radial aspect of middle phalanx, radial aspect of middle phalanx. And this is because of the subperiosteal erosions that occur in hyperparathyroidism. And this destruction of the distal phalanx, this is called as your acroosteolysis, also feature of hyperparathyroidism. And in hyperparathyroidism, you also see this diffuse lucencies that are spread out in the skull giving the appearance of a salt and pepper skull, salt and pepper skull and you also see the pepper pot skull in hyperparathyroidism. In the patients with hyperparathyroidism, you also see this expansile lytic lesions involving the bones. You can see them here, there's expansile lytic lesions causing cortical thinning in cases of hyperparathyroidism. These are called as your brown tumors or ostitis, ostitis fibrosa cystica. Ostitis fibrosa cystica is also a feature of hyperparathyroidism. Another important finding there is this sclerotic margin that is seen adjacent to the teeth socket, and this sclerotic margin that is seen adjacent to the teeth socket. This is called as your lamina dura. So, normally lamina dura is present adjacent to the teeth socket, sclerotic margin of the teeth socket. But in case of hyperparathyroidism, in case of hyperparathyroidism, there is loss of lamina dura. Loss of lamina dura. I do not see the sclerotic margin here. So, this is loss of lamina dura, also feature of hyperparathyroidism. Other important findings that you see in hyperparathyroidism are the soft tissue calcinosis, the uh, deposition of uh, calcifications in kidneys and also you see in secondary hyperparathyroidism that occurs due to renal osteodystrophy and all, you may even see a rugged jersey spine. So, rugged jersey spine is more in favor of a secondary hyperparathyroidism. In primary hyperparathyroidism, you see ostitis fibrosa cystica, loss of lamina dura, salt and pepper skull and erosions and acroosteolysis. And remember on the hand radiographs, erosions classically involving the which end? Radial end of the middle phalanx. Look at this image. What do you think is this image? In this image, you are seeing molten wax ossification of long bones. Molten wax like ossification of long bones. Molten wax ossification of long bones, this is feature of meloriostosis. Meloriostosis, you can remember M for M, molten wax ossification of long bones. Okay, can you see this thick molten wax like ossification? This is meloriostosis. Please look at the other similar images. Meloriostosis has this thick molten wax like ossifications feature of meloriostosis.